So here we are from another game uh, that it's about to start. I'm Borja from Spain. And I'm Philipp Stolz Borja. Thank you for joining me for this wonderful game we have. And it's with Madrid Lynx, and I think you know some stuff about these guys. And the ETU Honeybees of Turkey. Yes, I said from Spain, I know a lot about Madrid Lynx. They are the first team from Spain. Uh, they won the Spanish Cup this year and they have improved a lot since they started a lot of years ago. And this year they have made the huge step to be here in the first time in EQC. Awesome, and we'll see how they fare against the ET Honeybees. Uh, they're one of the better Turkish teams, I think, currently now siding at place three. Um, uh, don't quote me on that, but they're definitely one of the better Turkish teams. Lots of team spirit in that group and they are here to turn some heads and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see because also this game is going to be crucial because it's the last game for the two of them and since the two of them have won one and lost the other, this is it. This is it. This is going to be the one that decides who's going to be on the upper bracket tomorrow and who's going to be playing for the lower bracket later on. So let's see who's going to win this. So right now we can see here the captains of each team's Number four is Edgem, mm -hmm. the coach of the ETU Honeybees. Yep. And we can see on the Madrid links, they are Hector, who's the speaking captain, the main speaking captain, and Lydia, who is the president captain of the team. So tell me, Boja, I'm not very deep into the, the Spanish Quidditch scene. Like, how many teams are there in Spain, and are there new, uh, are there new teams emerging? Are there new players emerging? Well, nowadays in Spain, they play like 17 teams. We have some more like two or three teams that they are trying to, to grow up, but they mm -hmm. haven't still get to, to play in a competitive way. But uh, in all the regions, we have some projects of team that they are trying to. And in the region of Madrid, they have, they have always been two teams, Madrid Wolves that competed in the EQC in 2016. And in this time, Madrid Lynx is going to be represented the Spanish capital in this EQC. Yeah, I mean, Madrid is basically in the middle of Spain. I don't think there's yeah. a lot of teams around it, right? Because there's <laughs> no. Madrid and then there's basically a whole lot of nothing for a whole lot of time. Yeah, the problem that we have in Spain is like the, the Quidditch is focused in some regions, in some yeah. places. One is the central region and there are the other ones in the northern, in the Basque Country, the, the, the northwestern in Galicia, where Lumos, Compostela and or yeah. Dementores went. The, the other one is in the southern, where, for example, Malacca Vikings. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the other one in the Mediterranean area, for, for example, you can see in Barcelona, Barcelona and Catalonia and Barcelona Eagles, the, mm -hmm. the most famous from Catalonia. Yeah. So who are key players of the Madrid Lynx that I should keep an eye on? Well, I think that if this game is going to end well for Madrid Lynx, it's going to be because of the main, one of their main players. Oh, by the way, you have to be impartial, Borja. Do you think you can do that? It's going to be difficult. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> do your best, mate. Do your best. Yeah, okay. So if, if this is going to win, end well for Madrid Lynx, I think it will be because of Adri, number 11, uh, Chaser. And he's very fast. He's uh, very. Uh, he's got grown a lot in the sport since this is their, his second year playing just. And uh, last year went first time for the World Cup with, uh, for, with uh, Team Spain. Mm -hmm. And to say so, he's the one that caught the snitch that made us win against Canada. Uh, when we're talking about snitches, I heard for a little birdie, but one of the players um, that one of the players um, caught a snitch with their with her feet. Wow! What? what? I, I don't uh, I don't follow you. Can you please? Um, I heard that one of the players from the Madrid Lynx caught once caught a snitch with her bare feet. Is that is it oh, true? Oh, and I was there. And I you was were there. there. <laughs> it was it was in a, in our in one region's tournament that, that held in my in my town in my village. And yeah, it was like that. The snitch was just holding with uh, his hands to to the to the seeker. In this case, it was Naira number seventeen. Uh, and she was like in the floor, nothing could do. And uh, the seeker was thinking, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, there's nothing you can do. And there, in a moment, just feet up, feet down, and she got the snitch. <laughs> All right. And I was there, and my reaction was like, I cannot believe it. Boja is standing next to me with his mouth wide open. Yeah, I think that that should have been somewhere in the internet, and I hope we can find it someday. It is. Meanwhile, both teams are trying to keep warm, as this game is not yet starting. I think there's a small hiccup with the timekeeper app, which is providing all of you with live results of all the other plays. And yeah, guys, keep an eye on the timekeeper app. You can see all the results of all the other teams playing. And yeah, stay on point with everything that's happening here in Harald Beke, even if you unfortunately couldn't make it to Belgium.
Yeah, it's a, it's a great app. I saw it first in D2 in the in the uh, in the UQC uh, Division Two, and it's great that you can follow live all the things that are happening, all the goals, the scoring, all the cards. Yeah. Uh, we start also uh, using them in our in our leagues, so it's very recommended. Yeah, uh, shout out to Lucas Schoevens who created this app. Great work by him. And while we have you in the internet, maybe take a quick look at Twitter and follow us at hashtag EQC19Live. And you can give us some questions, maybe you, we, we can answer them here on stream. And follow us more than just on the live stream. Follow us on Twitter. Go to Facebook or chat with us in the YouTube chat. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're happy to know about you. Whatever you want to comment or, or say or ask, uh, we'll try to, to answer if it's possible. If, did, if it, this game gives us a little, <laughs> a little pause. So we're still like half an hour late in the schedule, which is for a tournament of this size can happen. Well, it can happen. It depends on of the luck you have. For example, in the last game, we have that bad luck with the snitch. For example, they, they, they had to to be some minutes waiting for a new snitch because the the, the main snitch got injured, and that's some of kind of things that you don't control. And unfortunately, yeah. and luckily, the, they they happen in some tournaments. But it's okay because I think we are all prepared to to have that kind of issues and fight them. Don't you think? Yeah, I absolutely agree. So what we can comment about uh, honeybees? Yeah, I mean we uh, we would definitely should. And the one thing I want to start is like with the coach of the ETU honeybees, Edgem, is like an idol to a lot of people. She's a very ferocious player. She can tackle anybody. Well, although she doesn't bring a lot of size and weight to the floor, she's got great technique and a lot of heart. I think she's one of the most passionate British players out there, and you have to count on her. And I, I gotta say, if I would drive it at her, I would maybe, I think about passing somewhat. Yeah, who doesn't know about about the plays that? That makes so uh, about that. Uh, well, it's the, it's the coach of the, yeah, of the she's honeybees. Yes, she's the coach of the ETU honeybees. And besides that, I think they're a very evenly matched uh, team. I think everybody brings a lot to the table. And if I had to uh, um, rule one uh, person out, it would be Edger. Yeah, of course. But also, also there, yeah, also it's Chotanak. He's like the co-captain. He's also a great player, and yeah, always in danger of um, get setting that. Great pick and all, like finishing for a drive. Awesome player. You know, I had the the chance to to play against uh, Honeybees in last Barcelona Mustaches time BMT. Ah, right. Yeah, I had the chance to play against them, and I have to say that even if they we have to play on Sunday, and they were just very tired because they <laughs> they didn't uh, go very much players, and they have bad luck with uh, injuries because two of their female players got injured in that game, oh, which was damn. very unlucky for them, and they got a lot of female players, which is good for them because when they got injured, they had substitutions. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, they involved the chance to win that game. We, I feel very lucky for because <laughs> winning a uh, honeybees is not a thing everyone can say. Yeah, exactly. But they involved their female players. You got to give it to them, of course. Yeah, of course. One one good thing we can say about Quidditch Turkey is that their females won't just will get you astonished. Yeah, as, as, I mean, you, we think about all these players, Edge, um, Sila. Yeah. Who doesn't know yeah, them. Yeah. Well, all right. And I, now I we love see that part. Yeah. Now we get the huddles of the, the ETU honeybees. It's the best of the, of the games. Hey. The honeybees are ready to take on Madrid Lynx. Yeah. In this deciding game of this group, whoever are you wins. Nervous? <laughs> I'm excited to be honest. I'm excited. We we'll see. Let's see if I control myself. I can yeah. control myself. <laughs> Whoa. Have a breath. Links are saying also they're shouting, which is Ponte Morado get purple. Yeah. <laughs> which in, in English doesn't get too much sense as yeah, it says in it's <laughs> a Spanish thing. Yeah, in, in the Spanish says uh, Ponte Morado is like you get ashamed or something like ah, that. All right. <laughs> But now we're ready to play in Harelbeke, Belgium. At great conditions, it's sunny outside, not too warm. Everybody is in good spirits and we have great conditions here on this pitch in the center of the stadium of Harelbeke. Yeah. We're glad to be here. Great. It's uh, great conditions and I was expecting to rain, but uh, fortunately it has respected yeah. us. Remember Warsaw when it was snowing? Oh, Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> Well, 
the cheer is crowding already. Yeah. Honeybees, are you ready? Yeah. Honeybees are ready. Madrid, are you ready? Yeah. And Madrid is ready as well. And Broom's let's see who up. wins that duel for the ready? Beetle, uh, Bludger and the Quaffle. Broom's up. Okay, let's ball. It's for first ball. Sorry, it's for Honeybees, keeper from Honeybees. Number fifty-four. Yeah, it's Ejiman. Yep. Doesn't see an opening at this moment. We're trying to think of something. Yeah, from the moment. Not a lot happening. Picks. Adri make him some pressure, but he gets beaten. We're seeing a 1-2 defense by Madrid. Pass Ooh, picked yeah. up. Raul takes that ball. Keeper from Madrid links. And comes down. He's going to start walking. But they're now going against the bludger control. Let's see how Madrid's... How would yeah. you uh, describe Madrid's style? Are, are they like more like cerebral? Uh, Madrid likes the, the things. Oh, they use likes the to think about everything. It's not a... It's not a... Oh, whoa. Now... This looks like this is going to be first goal for... Yes, yeah. it is first goal for Hannibis. As I said, Madrid is a, thing, it's a team that thinks a lot about what it's doing. It has a lot of tactics, it has a lot of techniques, yeah. and you cannot say they play in the same way because teams that say, I know what they're playing, they finish losing. <laughs> okay. So you never expect what they're, doing, what yeah. they're going to do. But in this case, it was number 44, Haluk Jr., they yeah. they were paying attention and picked up that uh, uh, quaffle and it was a quick counter. A with great the play. ETU, ETU honeybees with 10 nil in front. Okay, here goes Raul again. He passes to Megil. Uh, now still thinking what what he has to do, but they got bladder control, so in a moment they should start. Yo, nice try a start, but this pass yeah, is but too high. Not not so good the pass, not so good the beat, and Lynx loses the ball. Shame because they were well positioned, and Hector's try trying to enter again. Throws the bl the bludger to Barbara, just waiting for it. Yeah, but and look at Haluk Junior. Oh yeah, they is very uh, they are very good. Oh, tries to out. tackle Hector, but no, they resisted very well. Quick counter by number ten. As I told you, Adri is the main danger for Lynx. And he's, he's pretty fast, isn't he? Yeah, really, really fast. You cannot see him and... <laughs> very fast, very strong, and very good seeker also. If, you put, if they put them in the seeker place, you And I like that it. shake hands between 44 and Miguel. Yeah. That's a hard battle between beaters. Hector tries to steal, but he can't. Oh! Yeah, there's some reps. Uh, not yeah. going down, though. No. no. Edgeman still standing. Okay. But there's not a lot of speed in Honeybee's game oh, now, maybe. For Barbara. Not very. Oh, goal. Yeah. It seems to Took me. Took advantage from that failed beat. Yeah, it seems to me that the Honeybees are waiting for that mistake that Madrid maybe gives him. Yeah. And this time it was totally. the dodge, and then there was a clear lane waiting for it. And until this point, it seems to work out for them. It's 20 to 10 for the ETU Honeybees. Totally. But both, I think both teams are thinking more about, okay, we have to wait till our chance gets. We have to get advantage of one of their mistakes. We have to wait till they get a mistake, and then we can enter. And from now, uh, the, the Honeybees are taking more advantage of uh, Link's mistakes that's the other way. Ooh. Aurora tried the pass uh, on the left yeah. hand side, but tried it was to find Adri, up. but it was not possible. Now it gets beaten. Don't cover. Uh, ooh. Beat. Good beat. But nice uh, recent edge man. Nice passing. Yeah. Nice passing. Yeah, a nice goal. Another goal for Honeybees. Yeah, that was number 12 of the Honeybees. Yep. Okay. So now, once again, Raul has a... Uh, okay, only one bludger in the hands of Angel. Yeah. Oh, she has made a great block with yeah, the great, bludger. Great. Now she's looking for Another vengeance, one. but she's picked up. Yeah, perfect. Done by Adri. He has taken advantage from the plays that his mate has done. Right, the 
wind is picking up here, guys. So yeah, very windy. Not a rainy day, but very windy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think the, the the sub there by Madrid Links when they put in Angel, yeah, she's providing, she's coming from the bench and she's providing a lot of energy to the beating lineup, and I think it's shown in this instance. Yeah. Now the game is at 30-20. She's not a very experienced beater, but it's true that it, in, in, with very few time, she's taken a lot, a lot of improving in the in, yeah, in the game. Yeah, that goal is going to be because of her yeah. because she picked both of them up. Cheers for Angel and for Megil, the one scoring the goal, because uh, Lynx is in tight game again. Okay, honeybees, let's take your time and wait for the mistake Madrid gives you. Take your time, it seems to work out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, maybe the last uh, attacks were a little bit more fast than they should have been. And now they're, they're thinking. They're still thinking. Yeah. Pass on the right hand uh. side. They have a lot of time on their hands. It's all about the beating game at this point. Okay, so it's now Don Gaffa with the ball. Uh, Chaser from Honeybees. Still thinking. Has a made beater with with him. And uh, oh, face beat here. Want to Anke. enter individually and passes and ooh, Aww. close to be beat before but not. That was great. Don Gaffa put out all the attention on them. Yeah. And yeah, pick out the uh, went a in, forced great the beat. individual play. Yeah. You focus on yourself, and then when you get the beat, you made that last pass to serve your teammates uh, an easy goal. So it's tit for tat at this time. Each team not giving the other team an edge. Yeah. Staying in striking distance of one another. Whoa, good block. No, no, not blocking. And Aurora. Nah, Aurora, four, four, Aurora's no. passes as uh, too easy to intercept. This yeah. was a too high arcing shot. Yeah. She should have been higher. Shame for for her. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's got a she got, she's got a head up, looking for the open options. But in her pass, she needs to be a bit more intelligent. And now, yeah, yeah, it's it's very hard to think so fast when you're running. Yeah, I mean, it's easy for us to say hoops. things. So when, when so much pressure. Oh, good beat, but now he leaves. Oh, yeah, but Megal recovers, recovers the the quaffle. Now we're now for to Raul. And that enders. Whoa! A huge pass but to Adri. Taking. Oh, that was legal. It Adri takes it again, but he was beaten or not? He was not beat, and he was he's not, not beat. out of pitch. Whoa! The beater is not paying Adrian. attention. Look at it! Look at it! Look! Oh! Look at a very good, very good beat made from HM. She made a great beat. Now the ball is in the hands of the Honeybees players again. Oh, oh, so there's a foul. The game. Yeah, foul from Madrid Lynx. Looks, I don't know who made it. I mean, if I were to eat you Honeybees, I would have like maybe used that advantage call and maybe just get a distant shot off because you're getting the ball back. It seems because there was a foul call. Yeah, on that's the an, an, a usual tactic that a lot of teams do when you see there's an advantage. You try to just. Shoot from wherever you are, and if it doesn't enter, it doesn't yeah. matter because they yeah. will give you the quaffle again. Give it a try. Just yeah. give yeah. it a try. Okay, so let's see what they say. Speaking with each other, ref team. Yeah, Matter Links players are <laughs> appreciating their time on a live stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They love it. Waving to the camera. But meanwhile, we have the focus on the ref team now talking. Yeah. Because what they're going to say maybe could be important for their future, for their immediate future. Uh, okay, Hector, speaking captain, has been discussing with the head ref. And wants to know about the call. There's no call or there's going to be a call? I see no, no call. No call. Rebound. Okay, Rebound. no call. Okay, so, so we shut up because if they would take the shot, there would have been no call and they would have lost that quaffle. True. Okay, a good try to pass, and let's see if he finds him. Uh, and now he's turning, no, that ball should be in Madrid hands. Yeah, it should be. Hector takes that play out. Yeah, Raul recovers for Madrid Lynx. And now there's a foul call on the other ah, side. Advantage for Madrid Lynx. Uh, no, no, this is not, it's not gonna be an advantage too far away. You know, 
That, that happens to me once. When I, when I was a ref, I made an advantage call with, uh, with the, the, the team having the ball in defense in their own area. And I waited till they get to the, to the hoop to, to, to make the call. <laughs> and then I realized myself, okay, I cannot do that. Yeah, that that's should a be bit only when they are about to score that's or a bit very sneaky easily buffer. to attack. <laughs> because that's giving a, a whole attack for free. So that's maybe the reason why they didn't get that advantage. So ETU Honeybees in the last few minutes, they had the bludgeon control, seemed not to lose it that easy as they were in the beginning of the game. Yeah, but uh, maybe they're not being so lucky in their attacks. But Madrid is subbing often in their beta lineup, I, I, I think. I mean, I think that's like the fourth or fifth beta lineup I see on the pitch right now. Yeah, they're a very versatile lineup uh, of beaters. They have a female and male, they have a male and non binary, they have a male and a male, yeah, and, and they also have two, ma two females in the case it's necessary to put uh, their, their beaters. And they're all good. Yeah, mm. they want, I think they want to use it like high intensity, car. get these Honeybee, few sprints in, and as soon as Ignoring you feel a little bit tired, call. get back out. You have a whole lot of subs out there giving you maybe an edge when it comes to stamina. Yeah. And okay. Off we go. Resumes game. And Raul has the ball. Tries to tie the game. Long okay. pass. Long pass to Aurora. Oh, dismounted. Dismounted and the ball is in the hands of the honeybee's keeper. Edgeman. Two passes. Nice dodge, and now there's no bludger. They should make it quick. Oh, an easy one. It's gonna be an easy one or not? Oh, yeah. No, no, the ref says been before. And. Yeah, Chotanak might oh. disagree. He thought his attempt was in, but no, it's still 30 to yeah. 40 for yeah, the yeah. Honeybees. Megil has just subbed right now and is shouting his team to make more intense, one more intensity in, in the in the place. Yeah, I think they're, they're looking a bit passive in this whole approach to their yeah. offense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here goes Hadri. Yeah. Here goes again. That could be an easy one. Yeah, great play made by Lynx star Adri. Who ties the game 40 40. Yeah, in this case, it was just a matter of distance between him and the opposing beaters. He was too quick on his feet, having that distance, could get off the throw, and it was in. And oh. maybe the Ichi Honeybees should get someone against him, maybe guard him close, deny him that pass, or maybe deny him the first few steps to gain speed. Yep. Okay. I think the beating game of the Honeybees is now. Really, really suppressing. Epic, Ooh, nice catch. Good catch well, from Hector. And now another beat from Hector. And now another beat from Hector. As soon <laughs> as I one. said no, that. No, that's safe. Whoa, looked like another one. But a great bunch of plays made by the same player, by Hector, number three yeah. of uh, Madrid Lynx. Rocky is still on his feet. Yo. And subs. And now enters Javier in the, in the roster, beater of... Rocky's Madrid got links. an open lane. Oh, Nobody's yeah, guarding him. Nobody's guarding him. That's the goal. Another goal for Honeybees. Yeah. I think in this sequence, I was kind of disappointed with number 18. He was standing yeah, on the Jose left Mar side right, hoops, uh, and he didn't realize that it was his time. He should have at least denied that open driving lane to Rocky. Rocky could just go straight to the hoops and make it in. They were like a bit, maybe sleeping a bit. They totally, caught them off guard. Totally. 40 to 50. Okay, yeah. Now it's Naira taking the ball. Who passes to Raul, who makes a long pass to Josema, but doesn't take it. Now Adri takes it. Take oh, good block from Adri. Now he can enter, but not. Uh, passes again to Raul, but Raul gets beaten. Uh, Javi is trying to protect that ball, but went out of the, out of the field. So it's a turnover for uh, Honeybees. Okay, an intense play, and now the keeper from Honeybees is trying to advance with the quaffle, passes back to his mate. Rocky is wrapped, Whoa. can't oh. barely make a step. They try to tackle with two players, but they cannot, and advancing and scoring one more for Honeybees. So strong. Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, Rocky just put two people on him with the wrap, and then he got off the pass. Great effort by him, they couldn't bring it down, although they had a good, clean wrap on him. Yeah, yeah. 
but you know, uh, stopping so strong players is more than a rap. I mean, it's easy for us to say we're standing up here in nice conditions, roof yeah, over exactly. our head, yeah. and we're complaining about what these uh, people are doing here no, on the pitch. Not, not complaining, quality is quality. <laughs> Game time, 11.57. Not at all. Score is 60 honeybees, okay. 40 Madrid. Time out. Time out, requested by Madrid. One minute Relinks of time out. Request is starting. For a time out. Yeah, uh, and I think that's the right call. I think Rocky yeah. is giving is, is giving them a lot of questions they can't answer yet, and they yeah. need to figure something out. There's been two very very successful plays. Yeah, they, they seem they seem to be able to deny the passing game of the honeybees, but not the driving game. As soon as the physical force is driving to the defense, they seem to be able to be caught off guard quite a lot of time, and they need to think about some stuff. I think they do it. I, I think they're already playing in a 2-2 defense which would allow for more driving defense, but I think they just need to get more and deeper contact in these tackles. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. Need, they need to be more physical, and that's one of the maybe main problems from Madrid Lynx. They have a good player from the beaters, but they are not very physical. If we get Adri, that he's the, the most physical and the most athletic of their, of their players. Also, Raul can be a little bit physical. Miguel knows how to tackle very well, and he has experience of doing so. But the rest of the players, uh, they have that challenge. They had the challenge of being more physical with a team that has a lot of experience being physical. So, um, game is gonna resume whenever the head ref says he has to discuss something. Okay, maybe that broom is broken or no? Okay, they fixed it. So, uh, whenever the head ref says, the game will will resume. Yeah. Here we go. So, again, each year honeybees with the bludge control, and it, it's a hard. Mad uh, Madrid is having a hard time of regaining it. Receive nice oh, rep, though. Yeah, between the chairman. Oh, and takes the bludger and good throw from Barbara. They're alone. They don't have beaters. It's no bludgers. Let's see if Josema. Oh, good, good. Lost the ball. Very good defense from the chaser from Honeybees. Yeah. yeah. But also the beater of Madrid now got the blood control. They seem to listen to us, Borja. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Edge made it really hard for, for them. No, it was a good play, a good play from her. But uh, Hector was was very very close to that bludger mm -hmm. to take it. Now, look, Junior is back in. Uh, they I, make like, I like I like. Uh, pressure, the very big pressure because the two beaters are out of their area and that could be Raul's ball. Yeah, it's gonna be Raul's ball. And, and he can make it quick. Okay. Go for it. Go back. for it. Adri is on that score. Yes. It scores. So now the game is 50 to 60, right? I think so, yeah. And I mean, this game is always, always stayed in the scrimmage and yet I still think that the EGU Honeybees are a bit better in this pre-seeker floor game. Yeah. But we we'll see how this changes as soon as the snitch is getting on. Yeah, the pitch. you know how Quidditch is. You can be all 17 or 18 or 20 minutes dominating a game, yeah. and if you are not uh, good enough in the snitch game, you can lose everything. I mean, we've seen it on stream when the Indian UI lost oh, to Rufus. Another oh. goal, another good pass, catch and throw, and another goal for Honeybees. Oh, you're saying that. Yeah, that's how the sport works. Yeah, that's how the sport works, and that's why we love it so much. It's a whole different game as soon as you have to pay attention to a third element. It's not only a beating game, the chasing game, but the seeking game as well. And these three games banging into one is the high class of Quidditch. Oh, Barbara looks that wanted a change, but they, they deny it. <laughs> okay, 70 50 is the score. And. Here we see Naira with the ball, going back to Adri. He's protected by Hector. And uh, from the moment, not, not making any anything risky. Yeah, the honeybees regained bludgeon Ooh, control. and they That was risky. Yeah, They seem really, really set in their defense. Now they can push it. And they got the bludgeon on the ground. Wow. Yeah. Another one by Rocky. Another good attack, another good drive. And another goal. Yeah. I mean, I, I gotta say, Rocky is like a spark to the whole offense of the Honeybees. He's doing a lot, he's doing really quick. But also, his speeder, speeding lineup is helping him a lot in this time. Number 44 and number 13 for the Honeybees. Yeah. It's Ilar and Haluk Jr. Okay, so 
Now it's uh, 50 to 80 and 15 minutes, and it, that's the moment. That's yeah. the moment where the game is going to decide a lot because they're in the, in the 30 point gap, and there's only three minutes to uh, release the Seekers. Yeah, I mean, Madrid needs to score badly here. They don't yeah. want to get this awesome range unless they have the better control of the Seeking game, but still, they don't. Goal would go a long way right now. Oh, a throw. No. That was very well intentioned, but. Yeah, nice uh, flick of the wrist, but this shot is mm. off. So now, Madrid Links, we can say they have a problem because if the next attack of the Honeybees scores. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's see, it's Lydia, oh, trying to get that ball, Lydia, beat her from Madrid Links. And another goal for Hannibis, mm. another goal scored, and that's the moment. That's the moment we're out of swim range. Snitch, when it matters, that's no longer the case for the Madrid Links. They need to find a way to get back in this game. But I gotta tell you, with the current offense, I don't seem to think that they can do it. They have only one bludger, and they're not creating a lot of chaos in the defense of the honeybees. Maybe with a troll on my passing game, but I think the driving game is not working for them at this moment. Yeah, you think they should they should reset try more used. to go reset use, yeah. Be careful with that. Uh, Megil is trying to to move forward. Uh, passing not very good pass, but Roll takes the ball. And uh, let's see who's behind the hoops. Adri is trying to be that troll. Oh, another shot, another unfortunate shot. In this case, it's Raul trying to score from outside the area, and he doesn't make it. Yeah, I'm not sure if these distance shots are what, what's. I mean, it's too high risk. It's, I not. I don't think it's what made Madrid come back into this game. What do you think, Borja? I mean, do they have the long shot ability? Unfortunately, for, until this moment, they've only missed those. Look, there are lots of teams in Spain that they have players with a good shot from distance. Madrid Links is not normally one of them. Madrid Links works very well with tactics, well, works very well with technique, works very well with some of their players' physics, like Megil or Adri. But uh, sometimes when I see that kind of plays, that kind of throws from the distance, I'm thinking, you are n we're not aware of what you're doing, right? Yeah. And now the snitch floor is oh, always oh, ready to pass. start. And but the score is now 150. E2 Honeybees got away from Madrid Links. Yeah, the game yeah. is no longer really even. We e2 were Hon saying that. That was the minutes. That's the point. That's the spot where uh, some some team had to make their move. And uh, I totally think that uh, Honeybees is making their move. And that, uh, whoa, good beat now from Angel. She saw very well the, the opposite uh, players movement and now Megil can score. Yes, he does. And at the same time, there's a catch by oh. Hulok Jr. He's oh, yeah. They got it. They got it. Yeah, yeah. Hulok Jr. Whoa. Got it. Got it, yeah. I mean, it's tough to say. I mean, the, de the goal was definitely before the catch, but well, Hulok Jr. put his right hand well, let's see around if it's good snitch. because if it's good, it wouldn't really matter at all, I think. No, it would still be like a 40 goal. It would mean yeah, it would be 60 was to 130 star. Yeah. Discussing it. Yeah, the snitch was kind of losing control of her body. Maybe that's yeah. Could mean it's not good, but on the other hand, it looked pretty clean to me. With Let's Haluk see how much there. time they. Oh, look, they're making some gestures with the uh, with their feet, their movement. They don't seem to have very clear. Not by now. Okay. Defensive seeking for Madrid was Fred. You know what? If it was a Spain, we were checking the VAR. <laughs> <laughs> we did replace. I like to. I like to check the video replays whenever it's possible. I'm, I'm not sure if we're there as a sport yet to have it on any, but I mean, we are very fortunate to have good yeah. equipment on this tournament. But I don't think that any team is in favor. That every team is in favor of a video, and if not everybody is in favor of it, we should. Yeah, I know. There's a big but discussion about it's that. Yeah, it's a, it's a discussion to be had. Maybe in the future we can have a video referee helping us deciding whether yeah. snitch catch was good or not. I would be very happy to. Snitch okay, catch was good. The snitch was good. Congratulations to Honeybees that won the game. I think very fairly. Yeah, I mean that wasn't really a card. One hundred thirty 
star to 60 for the ETU Honeybees. They win this game. They pulled away in the latter part of the game. Madrid Lynx seemed to lose an idea of how to act as the offense. But don't worry about it, guys. Desk will provide you with... And welcome back to EQC 2019. So, Bex, what are your thoughts on the game just gone? I think it was very interesting. We've we've removed uh, obviously like some teams, some NGBs, having only Division One here today. But I think this is one of the the weakest matchups I've seen so far uh, of the tournament. We had a lot of missed passes. Nothing was quite as clinical as it has been with other teams. Like those are they're really no teams pushing for medal places. And I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe the nerves got to them or they couldn't work out quite how to like counter each other. Um, but I was expecting slightly more from the teams. It was the same thing. I, I could, because you did get a sense of fatigue, I think, towards there. I think pit teams are now getting into their s sort of last of the pool play games today. So they are generally sort of maybe saving up a little bit of their energy, possibly putting on some of their like players that haven't had as much of a go or their less experienced players on. So that could potentially be another reason. One thing I found, uh, today at least, is it was really interesting comparing this objectively with Australian and New Zealand style Quidditch. Um, you mentioned earlier while we were watching the game about how the, uh, the honeybees were doing a lot of driving. But one thing that I noticed, their passing game actually going up on the drives was very interesting. Uh, in New Zealand we call it sort of the back tackle pass, where you basically have the ball and you push it as far as you can, but the aim is to try and get it away cleanly. Early on when they first started, they were doing a lot of those pushing, 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 and just at the last minute or just before a tackle, passing it off. And they managed to do that successfully two or three times amongst their players to get some clean goals. It definitely did them a lot of favours. So I was pretty pleased to see that, a little piece of home, I guess. Um, as for the, but like you said, I did notice that a lot, there were things, sort of textbook mistakes, like two hands passing over hoops. Um, I think... There was just a lot. I don't think there were many mistakes on the Madrid side. I think they made a lot fewer mistakes, but they just didn't have that sort of 
sort of a little bit less cohesion and synergy on the offense. And I think that's where they let them down. It wasn't their defense. It was more just the ability to get points on the board. Um, but yeah, because then it becomes about the little things. It's about not just going for the shot when you can take two or three extra steps, you've got time, and put that ball hand through hoop. Or <laughs> the yeeting, as I refer to. If you're watching the live stream all day, with Sam, me and Sam and I talking, if you can yeet it through and make sure it's going to go in, yeah, some of those passes were a bit, a bit lackluster. Um, especially from Madrid, we noticed that there was a lot of those longer shots. So the longer shots are fine, especially in conditions like this. Like it's not particularly windy. It's just that you then have to have the receivers capable of, well, A, your passers have got to be very capable of like distributing the ball to exactly where it needs to be. But then also your people have to be completely capable of catching the ball. And there's a few then where your elite players, if they've missed it, they'll bounce it back up into their hands or something. It's like everything just became a bit of a fumble. I think there's a lot of potential both those two teams. And obviously, um, Madrid are their, you know, their national champions, so they are you know, a good team, especially relative to their NGB. And Spanish Quidditch has grown a lot in a, it's a relatively short space of time. Like even um, when I played in Catalonia in 2015, 2016, we beat the Spanish champions with very little... You know, hassle. So they have improved and they have come a long way in a long time. It's just, there's just like the polish. The core is there. We just need to really like polish up Spanish Quidditch. And that will come with time. Um, so you've got people like uh, Lai Miguel, who's playing for Lynx, who, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's coming from a sports background. But it's just a yeah, change in the culture and, uh, yeah, polishing right. it all up. Right. Well, speaking of time, we've got a new recorded roundtable segment for you with Bex and I, which we did yesterday. So enjoy the second half of the roundtable. Thank you very much. <laughs> 